Hi, everybody. Welcome to the DRF Race of the Day for Saturday, June the 11th. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer in the paddock at beautiful Belmont Park. The race of the day, well, it's the third jewel in racing, Triple Crown, the Belmont Stakes. Three-year-olds going a mile and a half. And as we take a look at the field, our coverage is presented by Spendthrift. And you can scan the QR code to access Race of the Day on your mobile devices. Please view free formulator past performances on the Race of the Day event page at DRF.com. Take a peek. Handicap along with us. Mike, can Rich Strike do it again? I guess that's the main question of the race, isn't it? Big upset winner of the Derby. You're going to have to take a much shorter price if you like him now, Dan, but maybe he's this good. You're not only going to have to take a much shorter price, you're going to have to take likely a slower pace scenario than there has to be, right? Has they were be. blazing in the Kentucky Derby. But as we th throw uh, up the time form U.S. pace projector, there's one speed. And that's the one we, the people who went gate to wire last time at and look good over this track in the Peter Pan. Yeah, I mean, it was a very fast race for this horse, and it was also a really nice bounce-back effort for him after the Arkansas Derby, where, for whatever reason, Danny, just failed to show up the first time he was tested. He did show up last time. A lot of concerns about that track with the, you know, a wet surface for him to run over. He got absolutely loose against a subpar field. He's another one. Um, I think you have to, you know, take a look at him on paper and say, is he this good? But as we take a look at the video replay, this is how you're supposed to beat a subpar field by open lengths in the Peter Pan with a 103 buyer speed figure. He draws the inside. He's got to go. I do have concerns about him going a mile and a half. There's a lot of speed on the bottom of this pedigree. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm worried about more distance for him. But, you know, to be honest, Dan, I was worried about the nine furlongs with him last time. He handled it just fine. He's supposed to be in control of this pace. I, I'm still not sure how good I think this horse is. I'm not sure that I want to take him at any kind of a short price. He is the morning line favorite. He can obviously win. Interesting that Taffy Joseph continues on with the two Skippy Longstocking. He was training sensationally going into the race at Pimlico, the Preakness, and he only ran evenly throughout behind early voting. Now, maybe he was compromised by a lack of pace in that race but after 10 starts, he still has a lot of improvement to do. Yeah, he has been improving in his three most recent starts. That's a good thing for this horse, who's going to be a very good price in this race once again. I'm not as concerned about distance with him. I'm worried um, that he may not get the setup that he needs here. And obviously, he's just a horse who has to get a lot faster. Number three is Nest. Philly taking on the boys. No problem for Todd Pletcher. He's done this trick before. Rags to riches. Upset Curlin, the sire of Nest, who has a beautiful route pedigree to go a mile and a half. She acts like she wants to go this distance. And she ran just fine in the Kentucky Oaks. She's just a little slow on figs. Yeah, she's a horse who just has to really improve if she's going to be able to go with the boys here. I'm with you. I thought her Kentucky Oaks was actually a pretty good effort. She was only second best there. She did not get the clean trip, though, that the winner got in that race. I think the distance is fine uh, for her in this race. I don't know if she's good enough. And now here's the Derby winner who stunned the world on the first Saturday in May at 80 to 1. We all know the story by now, not even in the race, uh, on the also eligible list, scratches in and Rich Strike pulls off the upset. And yes, you could say everything went his way from a pace standpoint. Yeah. Everything went his way from a trip standpoint, but he also had the agility to hit all the holes and he had to do a lot of running in the stretch and he still ran down two nice horses. Supposedly, he's training yeah. like a monster. Yeah, that's, that's what I heard too. Listen, um, a lot of things went really, really well for him on the first Saturday in May. And as well as you think he ran, and I do think he ran well in that race, you know, let's be honest, Dan, he took advantage in a lot of ways there at a huge price. You're going to take a much shorter price on him here. I guess the the... The one way that you could look at that derby and feel like it didn't exactly come out of nowhere is it was his first start on dirt in about four and a half months. And listen, this is a horse who had basically prepped on synthetic. Maybe he's just a better dirt horse. What do you make of the decision to skip the Preakness? Of course, the Triple Crown is every horseman's dream. And at the end of the day, they skip the Preakness. They decide to come to the Belmont with a fresh horse. They have one. Yeah. From the looks on him on the track, they've made the right decision. We'll find out Saturday. Yeah, true enough. I mean, listen, you can't argue with it as far as, you know, how the connections have handled him the way that they think they needed to handle him. Um, personally, I think he should have run in the Preakness, but he didn't. Creative Minister did run in the Preakness, and we're going to take a look at the replay right now, and he ran just fine to the third. Light on experience, fourth lifetime start, only uh, only his fourth lifetime yeah. start, a 100 buyer speed figure, hasn't taken a backward scale on the numbers, and what you got to like about him is his tactical speed. Yeah. He can stay close. Yeah, he can. I think he's going to get a good trip in this race. We'll see if he handles the mile and a half. I guess that could be a concern for him. He is a horse. He hasn't run um, in all three legs of the Triple Crown, Dan, but he did he's run on Derby Day. He did run in the Preakness, and he ran pretty well in the Preakness. He wasn't good enough to win that race, but I thought all in all the performance was fine. He's one of three in here with a triple-digit buyer on the way in. I feel like his might... His 100 buyer might be more predicted than the other two going forward just because of how he did it. And he does a lot of upside potential. It's been 20 years since Kenny McPeak won the Belmont with his favorite Belmont winner, 
Sarava. Up next is Mo Donegal, who won the Wood Memorial, and he took down a nice scalp in early voting, who had all the best of it from a pace standpoint yeah. that day. He got a beautiful ride, did Mo Donegal, saving ground into the stretch, got to the outside, but he ran down early voting. Early voting flattered him in the Preakness, yeah. and this horse ran just fine in the Derby. He did. Listen, he had the, the same pace setup that the winner of that race had. The difference was that Mo Donegal just wound up very, very wide in that race, while Rich Strike got to save all the ground and got through on the inside. Um, I still think Mo Donegal ran pretty well in the Derby. Um, I don't want to be too hard on him for that race. I also like the fact then that his two big wins so far, they're both mile and an eighth races. They're bo they both came over good horses, and they both came in spots where those good horses had the jump on him, and he came and got them both times. I like the way he finishes. I think the mile and a half is fine Absolutely. I think a mile and a half is going to be perfect for this horse. There's always been a lot of buzz around Modonical. I believe he has more tactical speed than a horse like Rich Strike, who is a true one-run closer. Golden Glider is up next, well beaten by We the People in the Peter Pan, beaten about 10 lengths that day. This horse is yet to buy her 90, let alone 100. Mark Cassie, it'll be an upset. It really would. I mean, he hasn't, let's let's just say he hasn't embarrassed himself in his graded stakes tries so far, but he hasn't been close at the end, and he's just got to take a huge step forward here. You know, I don't know if Barbara Road's good enough to win this race, but boy, he's an underrated little horse yeah, that seems is. to show up every time. What's odd about the situation is this is a horse that showed speed early in his career, and it seems like as they've gone longer with him, it's usually the opposite way. He's lost his speed. Yeah. The blinkers are coming off. He didn't run badly in the Derby, but he got the great setup. Yeah, he did. I mean, he ran fine in the Derby. I mean, he was actually even wider than Mo Donegal around the final turn. He wound up finishing about a length behind that horse. All in all, not a bad performance. He keeps showing up. He keeps running good races. He's never run one that's good enough to beat a field like this one, I suppose. And, you know, it's interesting that you bring up the speed that he used to have that he no longer has. I realize that it's tempting to look at him and say, maybe he gets forward this time in this race and pulls a better trip. I find it hard to look at him that way, Dan. He hasn't shown speed in any of his recent I races. I just think at this point in his career, they're taking him back and making yeah. one run. Before we get to our top selections in the Belmont Stakes, uh, please subscribe to the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel. We've got lots of great Belmont Stakes coverage the entire week. Time for our top picks in the Belmont in Todd You Trust. Yeah, well, he has a, a great record in this race anyway, so you could just take either one of his horses, I suppose. I was on Mo Donegal in the Derby, a little disappointed he didn't make it closer, but I, I had enough excuses for him, Dan. I still think he's a good horse. I still believe in him. He's not going to be the favorite here. I'm betting him. Rich Strike's been training sensationally coming into this race. He's really going to have to earn it if he's going to win this Belmont, though, because the pace likely not to be in his favor. But I still think there might be a little bit of upside here, and he won't be the favorite. I think We the People will be the favorite at post time. Uh, as for We the People fading, yeah, I'm going to fade him. Listen, I, I'm I'm a little bit scared that he's going to get loose and wire this field, but I don't fully trust him at a short price. Saturday's race of the day is the Belmont. We'll see if Rich Strike can do it again. Good luck. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman asking you to give DRF.com a try on Belmont Stakes Week. Put yourself in position to win big on Belmont Stakes Saturday with the power of daily racing form. Visit shop.drf.com now and get everything you need for the Belmont Stakes, including past performances with exclusive buyer speed figures, expert picks, betting strategies, clocker reports, and lots more. It's all at shop.drf.com. That's shop.drf.com.